On one particular day in 1849, desiring to devote a particular amount of time to formulating a planned escape, I poured oil of vitriol on my finger, an acidic liquid that ate away at the flesh. I then went to my rotund overseer and I asked for some time away to heal. Now, in his physician's opinion, he saw no wound and denied me any leave. I then returned to my work, more determined than ever, and I poured more of the acid on my finger, much more. I nearly burned the whole thing off, but this was finally enough for him to rent me a few days away. I then went to a cobbler friend of mine who had promised to help me find safe passage. For it seemed like an eternity, he and I toiled over a plan that would carry me away. But each time a plan presented itself, it proved too difficult. So I began to pray. I began to pray and pray, and just before I attempted to give up, a clear heavenly vision was presented to me by the Creator. A vision so simple, so elementary, it wrapped around my soul tight as a tick. Go, get a box, and put yourself in it. Say what now? <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. Where's a deep voice from up above? Where's the angel disguised as a peddler offering advice? Well, sure enough, it was just as simple as butter. Well, far be it for me to disobey a heavenly vision. So I went on down to the train depot to look at the sizes of the boxes that were being shipped. Mm, pretty small, but doable if I missed a supper or two. <laughs> now, when the box was finished, it was fantastic in its simplicity. It was as brilliant as it was ignorant. Soon, the day came when I was to send my box via locomotive. <laughs> Did y'all know loco was crazy in Espanol? I slumped into my box with a pouch of crackers in case of great hunger and some water in case of great heat. My cobbler friend was to accompany me on my journey, not an altogether un perilous task itself, but his plans soon changed. Say, uh, Henry, <laughs> man, <laughs> something came up. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm going to send up to Philadelphia and tell them boys that you're on your way. Well, I was on my way. Nailed in my package with three tiny breathing holes in the side and a sign that read this side up. The train lurched forward, splintering my hands as I grabbed the side of the crate. My head swam with the smell of burning coal from the train's engine and pine from the box. But just before the clamping in my sides had subsided, the train came to a stop. That one there, those two, and uh, where'd this box come from? That one there. My ears strained to hear the feet that lined my path as my crate took flight. My stomach soon told me that well, I could land it on a boat. And to make matters worse, my package, which was to remain right side up, was now upside down. My head began to quickly engorge with blood. My eyeballs felt like they were gonna burst at any moment. The veins in my temples were now as big as pencils and a cold sweat covered me from foot to head. I, Henry Brown, had begun to lose consciousness. And I began to pray. I began to pray in what now seemed like it surely was going to be my coffin 